Hi guys and welcome to episode 19 of Get Dev Wo Getting Dev Working even by Decadoz Rust. In this episode we're going to actually install uh, the Rust program language into El Captain um, OS X on a iMac. I'm going to use the Rust Up method which is documented here purely because uh, the security settings on my version of uh, OS X doesn't allow for uh, unsigned packages <coughs> at the moment. Uh, I can actually change that setting but I'm not going to because Rust up seems to work perfectly fine anyway. So I'm just going to literally paste that into a terminal and then we'll press enter. It takes a while to do its thing and I don't think we'll have GPG installed neither but we'll get around that. <clears throat> just put in your administrative password and it's downloading um, the manifesto and stuff <clears throat> uh, this may take a little while to do there we go, it's doing its thing so, oh it didn't take that long Okay, I was going to say oh, I need to find a way of pausing because I don't actually <clears throat> know where the pause button is on this thing. So while that's doing that, let's take a look at the documentation. Okay. Uh, we want to look at the where's the Rust app extended library app reference. There we go. This is something you'll get used to a hell of a, uh, this is going to be used for just about everything, uh, especially for me, I don't, I don't really know syntax for Rust yet, so I'm going to be referring to this a hell of a lot, I mean I've coded in a lot of different languages, so I don't really tend to always take in every single bit of syntax for each language, they're very similar in each other anyway most of them, I mean I code in C and C++, so the way how you code in Rust is somewhat different to those. Uh, looks like it's installing its thing anyway there. But yeah. So with this, I, I like the way how they've done the layout for this because you can literally search for whatever you want. So if you think you want to do an I.O. operation, you type in I.O., press enter, and you get all your different I.O. includes. So you can then look up which one does what figure out what you need. I believe they've got um, examples as well so let's just go stdir and it's got like an example of how to do a read and a write and stuff like that which is brilliant uh, especially if you're going to do um, anything that requires you to load in files and stuff like that and buffer them. Uh, it's also got seek and all the other bits and pieces examples. It's got examples of buffer reading and buffer writing so there's, there's a lot of um, documentation on each little aspect of it and under the I.O. it will show you pretty much the types it'll have the modules which is great at the moment we're in I.O. module then it will tell you some macros so uh, a lot of the macros are really useful for different things uh, so we've got iterators it's, just, it's got a hell of a lot of information about the subject what you want to know about at the time and like I said it's a really good um, search setup and so we want to find out about file so you got stdfs file so I'll explain about that if you'll notice it tells us to put prelude or prelude what you call it uh, it, show, it shows you how to create a uh, mutable reference or a mutable um, file, yeah there's a mutable reference to a file there, so we have access to reading and writing in file methods, um, it's got examples of all different sorts of things like synchronization, data synchronization and stuff like that, so we can go through these things during the course of the um, series or I'll make a series on actually programming in Rust because at the moment this is all setting up development environments that's what this series is all about oh uh, it's actually ready to work so <clears throat> uh, where am I now let's find documents yeah there's documents cd 
documents. Make a directory called uh, side projects. Uh, go into side projects. And I will try a cargo new uh, dash dash bin. It's just telling it it's a binary project. Uh, and then let's give it a name. Um, hello iMac. There we go, it's created the application file CD into Hello iMac. It's got the standard um, cargo tom file and the source file, so if we uh, CD into SRC. Uh, have I got TextMate on it? I think I have, so I'm just going to try Mate. Uh, that should load up text, mate, with this folder as the uh, thing. There we go. Right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, we've got a function main printing hello world. We want it to say hello IMA. This particular one, so save that. Uh, and close, I think. No. So now I'm just going to do a card oh, CD actually into the. Um, directory. I'm going to do a cargo build to make sure it builds OK. Looks like it's going OK so far. Okay. Feels like it's taking a while to me but I suppose it depends on the actual thing itself and stuff. Finished uh, doing a debug build so literally we'll do a cargo run and we end up with hello iMac. Now the actual build, if I miss that, we've got a target directory, so cd target, cd debug, and you'll notice we've got a hello iMac, so if we actually just run hello iMac, uh, sorry, uh, dot slash hello iMac even, it runs the hello iMac binary file without having to use cargo or anything. Obviously that's a debug build, we would want a release build but for now that's fine. So yeah I'm in the correct folder. So um, that's all there is in the um, cargo tunnel. Uh, basically it has the name of the file no, rather the name of the package, the version you're working on, the authors, and any dependencies. This one doesn't have any dependencies at the moment, but you can add dependencies to it. If we, for instance, go into um, just dependency. Say anything about the dependencies in Rust. Okay, not too sure. I, I I do know there's like a big list of dependencies somewhere. So sub project dependencies. Yeah, I'll have to have a fiddle about with that. But anyway, we've done our uh, job for this morning. Uh, we have Rust actually installed. I'll be doing a few different IDEs on the iMac. Uh, in fact, while I'm actually in this video, I'm going to quickly search for most IDEs on OS X. Ready for the next video at some point. Hmm, that's the same concern. The ID of Mac. Rust and IDEs, let's have a look at this. It's Rust Forge, I think this has like a list of different stuff on it at some point, but looks like it's not actually loading. Oh, there we go, it's finally. Rust IDEs, blah blah blah, current status, Eclipse, Visual Studio, in ah, I haven't actually done an IntelliJ um, video on how to do IntelliJ as your um, 
IDE. So I might actually do a version of that in the next video to see what other things we can actually add. Yeah, I do think that might be an idea. That idea, no, excuse the point, that wasn't actually intended. But yeah, IntelliJ Rust. Rust plugin for IntelliJ idea. It looks like it should be okay to go through. So I'll try and make a video of uh, doing this in the next day or two. So we'll have some more uh, ideas and plugins for you. So I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and have.